Busters. We've got the latest film news and trailers with a preview of a unique, awesome cinema and a couple of reviews all lined up in a relatively small package. So let's catch to Kieran, who's got the latest on what's been happening in the world of film. Hey guys, now I've got some very juicy film news for you. Does the name Ian McKellen mean anything to you? If so, keep tuned in as I've got some gossip on the legendary actor. You don't want to miss out on that. First up, do you like singing, do you like comedy, and have you seen the first Pitch Perfect? Well, make sure you listen right now. Rebel Wilson has confirmed that there's going to be a Pitch Perfect 3. Yes, the hilariously cute Fat Amy is coming back. However, it is yet to be confirmed by the studio, but with Pitch Perfect 2 coming out on May 15th, it is pretty much a sure thing. It has also been announced that Gemma Arterton from Quantum of Solace has signed on to star a, as a young screenwriter in a romantic comedy set in wartime London called Their Finest Hour and a Half. Sam Clathin from The Hunger Games and Bill Nye from Love Actually have also been cast. It's going to be directed by Lone Scherfig, who was behind the likes of The Right Club and An Education. He's frequently labelled as the ultimate lad. Yes, that's right, I'm talking about the one and only Ian McKellen. The director of the live version of Beauty and the Beast has chosen McKellen to play Cogsworth in the ever-growing star-studded cast. The cameras are set to start rolling this May at Shepperton Studios with the film set on track for a March 17th, 2017 release. A new official poster for Pan has sailed or flown onto our screens, shall we say? The image of Captain Hook's ship, the Jolly Roger, flying over London amidst a full moon mentions the names of just a few of the well-known cast members. Hugh Jackman, Garrett Hadland and Rooney Mara. Not forgetting Carol Delvine and Amanda Seyfried lined up for the film too. The latest Peter Pan version is set to swoop into cinemas July 17th. The annual MTV Movie Awards were held last Sunday and well it was an event that had some good moments and some bad moments. Host Amy Schumer wasn't particularly popular and some of the musical performances by the likes of Fall Out Boy and Charlie XCX were pretty good but some say it could have gone better. Vin Diesel very sweetly paid homage to the late Paul Walker by singing a few lines from the Furious 7 soundtrack but most of the night was dominated by Chalene Woodley. The actress accepted the Best Female Performance, Best Kiss and Best Movie Award for her the role in The Fault in Our Stars and she also picked up the Trailblazer Award. A very good night for her indeed. That's it for me, now back to our leading lady, Rhiannon. Thanks for that, Kieran. You can catch our next film update at the same time next Sunday. Now it's time to check out some snippets of the most recent trailer releases that you quite frankly need to see. Is it really surprising that the most powerful man in the world should be a figure of controversy? We, as a population on this planet, have been looking for a savior. We're talking about a alien whose very existence they are not telling us the truth. challenges our own sense of priority in the universe. Human beings have a horrible track record of Tragedy. following people of great power. Power corrupts, and absolute power, power corrupts absolutely. Chaos. Maybe he's just a guy trying to do the right yeah, thing. We know better now, don't we? Devils don't come from hell beneath they us. They brought their war here. No, they come from the sky. The world has been so caught up with what he can do that no one has asked what he should do. Go home, go home, go home, go home. That's how it starts. The fever, the rage, the feeling of powerlessness that turns good men cruel.
force is strong in my family. My father has it. I have it. My sister has it. You have that power too. What are you guys excited about? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, every fortnightly episode we will review two films, one being indie and one being a blockbuster. This is the big review you've all been waiting for. We are taking a trip in time and watched, wait for it, the Hot Tub Time Machine 2. So let's welcome Chris to have a little discussion about what he thought of the film. Hi Chris. Hey, how's it going? You right? It's going good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks not for being right. here. You're welcome. So can you just give us a bit of a rundown of what Hot Tub Time Machine 2 is? Okay, I will do. I'll try to. It's a bit of a confusing one. To try and get your head round. Right, okay. Okay, so you've got oh, Lou, Nick and Jacob. Mm -hmm. And they're all at this house party. Lou gets shot in the penis. And he's losing right. so much blood. He's dying as one would from the pain. It's horrible. I can imagine. I sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> so they thought, let's go in the hot tub. Let's go back in time 10 minutes. Sort the issue out. Job's done. But no the hot tub malfunctioned, end up going into the future 10 years. Um, because Lou was still alive, they've realised that, oh, hang on, they must have sorted it somehow. Mm -hmm. So they worked out that whoever it was that went back in time and shot him, well, obviously, they came from the future. So they need to try and work out who it was and what the reasoning was right behind it. So do you know who it was? Are we allowed to give that away? I mean, I know. I know well, who it is, you know. but it's a bit of a spoiler because that is the whole film. They're trying to find out who it was. So I can't get that out of you. No, unfortunately okay. not. So what was your opinion of Hot Tub Time? Uh, my opinion on the film. Now I wasn't a massive fan of it. I didn't think it was that good of a film. No. I felt like the humour wasn't on point. It wasn't that great, to be fair. It felt very recycled. It felt like it was just a money spinner from the first one. Right. So you wouldn't recommend it to anyone? No, I don't think I really would. I mean, if you're interested in the first one, if you really like the first one, because the first one, like, it wasn't that bad. So if you like that one, then perhaps you can go and make up your own mind with the second one. But for me, it's a no. I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of it, no. So it's a bit like, you can go and watch it if you want, but... Yeah, it's more... It's not a, a go-to watch. It, I wouldn't say it's a film that you need to need to see. Yeah. It's something you could wait into, like, years down the line to watch. So is there any standout part of the film at all? Um, not really, to be fair. There's no. one part that is mildly okay, and mm -hmm. it's with these cars that are actually, it's all smart cars, they all drive themselves. The car can sense when you need a car, so it will just come to you immediately. So like no drivers? No drivers, right. nothing, just comes to you. Sweet. And it kind of scans the people and said one like an old Bruce Willis or something. That was the part that made me chuckle. Yeah. The rest of it kind of did struggle to get a laugh out of me. So I'm, fine, I'm getting the feelings a bit dysfunctional kind of film. No like yeah, storyline. It, it felt like it was a bit mixed up. There wasn't a kind of a straight on story that you know you could probably keep up with. It was just a bit all over the place. So what's it compared to the first film? No, it didn't feel as organised as the first one. Mm -hmm. The first one was quite good, within reason. Yeah. But the second one, it's just, I feel like they've just done it to kind of, you know, make money on the name, the franchise. Okay, so if you could fill, uh, sum it up in one sentence, how would you sum it up? I would say a hot tub that's broken and they should probably try and fix it. So smash or bust? Unfortunately, <laughs> it's a bust from me. Better luck next time, I'd say. 
Oh, well, thank you for coming in. Amy. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'll, uh, have you on again soon. Thank you. <laughs> but um, don't take your swimsuit off just yet. We're continuing on the topic of hot tubs. Check out what kind of cinema me and the production team went to the other day. So yes, I'm in Digbus surrounded by people in swimming cozies and I'm wearing this funky rubber ring. Want to know why? Well, I need something to help me float. Okay, that doesn't explain anything, but let me fill you in. I'm at the Hot Tub Cinema. Hot tubs have been set up everywhere and audience come along to watch some classic films. I don't know about you, but I think it sounds great. I'm here to watch Top Gun, but before it starts, let's have a little nosy round. Hot Tub Cinema is, the name says what it says on the tin, it's uh, 20 or more hot tubs, 120 people, uh, two cinema screens in, in amazing locations. Uh, it started as a private party, it was something that we thought was fun to do, as the, as the story goes we uh, used to just have a hot tub in the backyard and we wanted to have a little bit of entertainment so we projected onto a bed sheet and that grew from one tub to two and these parties became more and more legendary and um, our friends just said you've got to share this with the public. Uh, we spent many, many many months trying to find venues in London and around the London Olympics we, we launched on a rooftop in London and uh, uh, the rest is history, uh, three years, 300 shows, three countries and uh, we're still going. You don't want to be having to jump out and go to the bar, so it's part of our. We want that juxtaposition between the, you know, the luxurious and the opulent and the and the little bit of silly. So we often all of our waiters will dress up in costume, and you know, you have your own dedicated waiter. So it just, it's a, you know, it's a, it's it's a, it's a little bit of luxury for you know for twenty quid ticket. So I'm in the hot tub. I'm ready. The waiter's gonna come now and give me my drink. I've got some tokens ready. So I'm, I'm really pumped. It's so warm in here. So kick back, relax, and enjoy. Oh my gosh, watching that again just makes me want to go back. On to drier topics now, let's squeeze in another review. I've got a big question to ask you. Do you like Ryan Gosling? Do you stare dreamy at his face? Maybe just admire his acting? Well, I've got just the thing for you. For our indie film review, we had a look at Lost River. Here we've got Laura to talk about it now. Hi, Hi Laura. <laughs> you okay? I'm good, thanks. Good, thanks for coming on. Um, but w what is Lost River? Basically, it's, um, it's a film about a single mother who lives in this sort of abandoned kind of deadbeat town um, in America and she lives with her two sons, one's you know, toddler age and the other one's a teenager and she's got, she gets told by the bank that she's going to lose her house so in her desperation to sort of save it and get some money and everything because she doesn't want to live on the street with her kids um, <laughs> yeah obviously uh, she becomes part of this underworld sort of unknown torture themed nightclub um, and she gets involved more and more in this world and it's sort of you know it's not really what she's used to mm. and it's very different and it's obviously quite weird um, at the same time her son Bones is the, which is the eldest one he's getting sort of chased after by the town's bully and sort of hassled by him and he becomes friends with this girl and 
I can't remember her name, but yeah, they, they sort of become friends and they want to discover more of their area and they want to get out of the town because obviously there's nothing there for them. Yeah. Um, and they come across this old river and basically it was sort of old towns and you can just see the street lamps sort of sticking out the top of the river and they're sort of trying to discover what's behind the origins of the town which is called Lost River and what happened to these towns that are under rivers. Yeah, it's all about so that. So it's basically just all set around this. Like, yeah, one it's, quite, it's quite a weird story, but it's interesting. So obviously it's um, Ryan Gosling's debut um, directory. So what do you think of that? I think it's good. Like, you can tell it's done by him. You know, it's got his retro sort of artsy style. It's, it's, got, it's got a different twist to it. It's not your average story. Um, <laughs> it's, I think it's good, but it is lacking a bit in some sort of sense that it could be a bit more it could be a bit more like crazy it could be a bit more dystopian i suppose but um yeah i think does it show that he's a, that it's a bit of an indie film then because he's done it yeah I th it definitely shows that like the start of the film it's sort of it's almost like a home video recording of the kids and um yeah that has quite an authentic different feel to it and it's quite cute does it remind you of any other films yeah, it reminds me of uh, Drive, which Ryan Gosling was in. It's got that s sort of similar camera shots and that old-fashioned, rustic kind of style. Um, and yeah, it's sort of got that that weird sort of vibe to it. But I think it's... And also I'm Legend. It's definitely got that dystopian, abandoned feel to it. The town, you know, there's just nothing there. So do you think this was a smash or a bust? I'm going to say a smash because... For Ryan Gosling's first attempt at, you know, directing a film, I think it was a pretty good effort. Um, but, you know, he could have improved on, like, the mythical sort of fairy tale element. I think that could have been made a bigger part of it. But yeah. apart from that, it was good. Awesome. Thanks for coming on, Nova. No worries. Um, so now on to our throwback film of the show, for you to happily relive. As the weather is being rather lovely and sunny, our throwback film suggestion is Grease. A nice summery film with some amazing feel-good songs to get you even more ready for this warmer weather. So that's it from me now, guys. I hope you enjoyed a taste of all the movie updates that Filmbusters had for you. If you want to find out more about the Hot Tub Cinema, then look them up online. Our next episode will be a shorter, very specially themed look at the latest Avenger film. You don't want to miss a thing. See you next time.